All right, I'm finally finished with my jury duty. And it lasted four days. And deliberation took two of those of those four days. And it was about a woman in, in a robbery case. And we were trying to uh, decide if she was guilty or innocent. And I was a head juror and had to lead a conversation with 12 individuals. And it's never easy doing that when all of us have different opinions on this person's innocence. Uh, but that was decided, and uh, she came out not guilty. So, anyway, I apologize for the lack of updates when it comes to trading uh, when on YouTube, video updates at least, and, and also on the Telegram channel. Um, but you guys obviously know that I have been very busy with jury duty, and I'm finally done and able to make more regular updates. So here, here I am talking about the trades that we're in. And I'm not going to be allowing comments on this video because uh, there's too much potential for uh, to be harassed by those that have a different opinion on, on trading and those that disagree with the way I trade. And I've responded to a lot of those comments in, the pa in my past videos. And I'm just I'm just tired of of explaining my trading strategy, what I believe, and how I and how I trade uh, to these individuals. So I'm not going to be doing it anymore. And so the videos that I am in drawdown that I decided that to show people, I won't be allowing comments on them. So I apologize for those that would like to comment on them, but unfortunately. Uh, because of those individuals that like to harass me and what I what I do and how I trade, uh, because of those individuals, uh, and I'm not calling any names, um, because there's always new people that are going that's that are going to find my videos and decide to to say these things, um, and uh, I just don't want to have to explain myself anymore. So, moving on. <clears throat> You can see that we're in drawdown, and I know that l those of you that are following me also are, are, are experiencing that as well. Some of you have closed out your trades already and have moved on, and unfortunately that's that happens. And it's because we've had two drawdowns, two big drawdowns in the last two weeks. And that is a very unusual situation. That's something that I have not experienced uh, this close together with my strategy. Uh, but I have mentioned before that the markets are always changing. And it's hard to predict what's what's going to happen in the future. And we've had very dramatic uh, and traumatizing events that have happened uh, for the Canadian dollar. Uh, economy issues, uh, tariffs that Trump is putting in place, uh, NAFTA agreement, and just to, just to name a few. So why am I trading the pound Canadian dollar? Well, actually, why am I trading the Canadian dollar if, if so much negativity has been coming into place for it, with it? Well, initially, you'll see that if I go back, scroll back a bit, you'll see that what happened with the first basket of trades. So we ran up, ran up because of the tariffs. This was a big run up because of the tariff issue that happened. And once we had clarity that... Canadian dollar was, or Canada was going to be ex exempt temporarily from the tariffs until an agreement was made with NAFTA. And what that did in turn caused this to go down. We were able to close out for profit and it even extended further. So that bias of buying turned around very quickly after we found out that Trump was going to exempt Canada. So my point is, is that all it takes is for some clarity on, fun, on the fundamentals to change traders' biases. So what we have here is traders driving this up because they are fearful. And this, is, this can be an opinion, but it's said that traders are fearful of what Trump will do with NAFTA. And there are currently talks going on. Uh, I don't know if... Uh, when there's an, like an official statement being going to be made, 
but I know that there are talks going on about NAFTA currently, and a lot of traders and people are fearful that Trump is going to nix an agreement with NAFTA and to say no agreement is going to be made, and that would that would put the tariffs in place and all sorts of issues on the Canadian dollar, and that would shoot it up hundreds of pips in a matter of minutes, and it would cause substantial losses. I'm just not convinced, and this is just me speaking, that an agreement won't be met. I feel like that Canada is a great, a, a, a very strong ally of the of the U.S., and no agreement with NAFTA would just hurt them so badly. And I just I understand that Trump is a very volatile type, is a very volatile president, and he can make that agreement, uh, uh, nix that agreement with NAFTA in a second and not look back. That's possible. That's why fe that's why there's so much fear here is that he's capable of doing that. But I still can't justify him ruining Canada and such a big or that relationship so much by by destroying that agreement. And if there's agreement, if there's any agreement actually, this will shoot down likely hundreds of pips on the downside and we'll be able to get out of this trade. And that can happen at any moment. We can, we'll get a, a random statement. Actually, you won't even see the statement before this starts moving. This will just start moving in a matter of seconds, potentially hundreds of pips, maybe maybe more, and then you'll find out what it was after the fact, what caused it. So it doesn't make sense for me to start cutting trades right now. I'm going to let the strategy uh, take its course. And as you can see, we have stop losses in place. And stop losses on each trade is about five is 500 pips. So it's trade one, that's all the way down here, has a stop loss of 500 pips. And you can see where that is. It's about 80 or so pips above. And so once that part, once that place is hit, so this pushes up further, once that mark is hit, then our first trade down here will close out for a loss. And it will be anywhere from three to 5%. And if it continues up, we'll take more losses. And they could be substantial, yeah. But, there's always a but here. <laughs> My strategy has shown that when price runs up to around 500 pips, it typically will come back down. I know that past uh, data does not guarantee future data or similar similarities, but or past results don't guarantee future results. But with the data that I've pulled, there's a reason for that 500 pip stop loss. It's because in most cases from our first order number one, price does reverse right around where it is right now. So that's why I'm not closing out any trades at the moment is because one, NAFTA, could, an agreement could be met with that at any time. Two, Brexit. Now we are talking about Brexit negotiations at the moment as well. And we have had some rumors that Brexit negotiations are going well and an agreement is happening soon. We don't have any concrete evidence of that yet. But if something comes out saying that we have an agreement and things are great, we're moving forward, the pound Canadian dollar is going to shoot up. And it's going to shoot at probably hundreds of pips if something like that comes out, maybe more. But if there's something that comes out, which has been a very likely scenario that's been happening for months, years now, is that they continue to keep uh, negotiating and they need extra time. Let me just make sure that my headset's going. Okay, good. They need extra time. And no agreements have been, have been met yet. And that's when we have a push down on the pound, negative on the pound. So, we have multiple fundamental things or news events that could happen to drive our price down or up, um, and it could definitely go against us or in our favor. And right now, the anticipation of negative news, which Trump not agreeing, uh, not uh, or nixing an NAFTA agreement, 
has been writing this up. The pound hasn't really been helping that much either because the pound has been in a bit of a, of a range for the last while where it kind of has been kind of going up and down. And it's definitely, it feels like it's in a waiting process. It's waiting to f find some clarity with Brexit if it wants to shoot up or shoot down. And so it's been kind of ranging in a technical way. All right, so this move here that we had, a little bit of technical profit taking is what I, I like to look at it as, and it's a pin, and that's an opinion. But there was a, a, a round number at 183 that was hit up here. And I, I would imagine some profit taking happened, pushed this down a bit, and currently we're on, on our way back up. And this, I did not expect this to continue down. We needed extra, we needed more fundamental data to continue that pushing that, or, or to add, it, add, add to that technical um, pullback that happened. We need some, some fundamental data to really extend that. Uh, the same thing happened here, where we had a pullback at this point, and it, it was a technical pullback in here. It's just not enough data to support, uh, to change investors' mind on pushing this down further. It's the same thing that's happened today as well. A change in bias needs to happen, and we don't have that yet. It's possible that this could extend into up until that, until we have some more clarity on NAFTA on, and on Brexit. So you may be asking, well, it sounds like a big risk, right? So holding this sounds like a like a risky situation because anything can go in in any direction based on what agreements are made with Brexit and, and NAFTA. You know, sometimes we need luck as as traders, and in situations like this. But I have pulled my data over the last ten years, and my data shows that within reason, and that's from a 500 pip reason from order one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that price typically will reverse around where it is now on, based on previous data. Now, is that anything I should, uh, does that pull in any merit? It has in the past. We'll see if it does now. So, where am I going to, moving forward? Let's say that we get out of this trade taking no losses. Moving forward with, with that means those that c can't handle this drawdown anymore should leave. And they, that's fine. I know that some have already left already because of, been, uh, because of the drawdown. Um, but I will be considering Remove, temporarily removing the pound Canadian dollar until we have some more clarity. So let's say that price extends down and we still don't have clarity on Brexit or NAFTA and we actually are able to get out of this trade. I will likely discontinue using the pound Canadian dollar temporarily until we have some more clarity because I don't want to get stuck in another situation where we're deep in, in on one side. And so I will likely not be using the pound Canadian dollar for a couple weeks. So the other two pairs, the pound, the Aussie, uh, Aussie CAD, and the um, NZD CAD. So those two pairs I'm going to continue to use. Uh, I think I feel like they're a bit safer at this moment uh, to use, and I may increase the risk on those two pairs to make up for a, a little bit of the, the lack of potential profit that we may be missing. Uh, in the coming weeks if we discontinue, temporarily discontinue using the pound, ca uh, pound Canadian dollar. So I don't think that I can expect an 8 to 12 percent by cutting out the pound CAD because it is a, a heavy profit maker for, for me in, in standard price behavior. Uh, but that will be talked about once this trade basket is closed out. I apologize for the drawdown. And it's unfortunate that they've happened so close together. We had one last week. We had one this week. One, the last week one was 28%. This week we went up to about 26. And uh, it's been likely very hard for those following me to, to handle that kind of drawdown. Because it also kicks into our profit. Because while we're waiting for drawdown, it means that we're missing out on, on profit potential, causing us to have a lower 
growth or profit gain for each month while waiting for these losing trades to come into profit. So I think that covers pretty much what I wanted to talk about today and where I see things moving and how I will adjust uh, going ahead. I also will continue to test my strategy to make sure that if the markets are changing and we can expect more drawdown like this, then it may need a, uh, a modification to help with drawdown scenarios like this. Another reason why I may be temporarily disabling trading on the pound Canadian dollar to uh, evaluate it a little bit further to make sure that what we're doing here is the best way to trade that specific pair. All right, guys and gals, I'll see you guys on, on Monday for a potentially another update. I do expect these trades probably not to close out in loss, well, in, in profit until sometime mid next week. Uh, we don't have a lot of fundamental news happening until about Wednesday. Uh, so likely we'll be holding these trades over the weekend. Uh, so time to brace yourself and those that continue to follow me and keep these trades open, try to stay calm and try to understand what the picture is now and in, in the future and, and helping uh, and I'm trying to help you with how I'm seeing it so you can hopefully understand my reasoning and, and see it in the same way. Um, but understand that there's risk, there's risk here on both sides that uh, depending on what happens in, with NAFTA and Brexit, it could cause losses, but it also could get us out in profit. Nevertheless, once these trades close out, I want you to decide for yourself if this is something that you want to continue. You understand, you've got, you've understand the risks in a very heavy way now. You've been, for those that were thrown in just about two weeks ago on this, um, you are experiencing some of my heaviest drawdown. And so I think that you will understand, and now you understand the, the worst that my strategy has to offer. Um, and knowing that might give you some personal clarity moving forward. See you guys on Monday.